So, uh, last lecture we were taking a look at deconvolution filters. So, after taking a look at you know simple filters like averaging, uh, okay, we also took a you know which is a kind of a low pass filter. We also took a look at, for example, the Gaussian filter and binomial filter, right? So these are examples of the low-pass filters. Then based on the low-pass filters, we did a derivation of the high-pass filter, which was I minus the kernel for the low-pass filter. The identity kernel for images is, okay, the, for example, if we are using a simple averaging filter, this will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 divided by 9, right? Uh, so then we'll get uh, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. It's the high pass, right? Then we also define the sharpening. So sharpening, if you recall, was take uh, some factor, some weight, 1 minus W, uh, for example, the original image. plus W times the high pass filter. Okay, uh, so we came up with a kernel for, you know, based on the kernel for the high pass and how to be, uh, in the pixel domain, this will be convolution as an example, right? W was a weight between zero to one, so that we can decide uh, what percentage of the original image has to be added to the high pass, so that will end up sharpening the images, right? Then next thing we started to take a look was uh, derivative filters. Okay, so here the idea was there are two filters that are important over here. One is called the gradient filter, and one is called the Laplacian filter. And very briefly, gradient filter, we try to take the first order derivative in the x direction, first order derivative in the y direction, and uh, square it, square it, take the square root, then whatever final answer we get uh, is our gradient uh, filter, right? For the Laplacian filter, we take the second derivative, not the first derivative, so d squared p over dx squared plus d squared p over uh, dy squared as an example, right? Okay, so the purpose of the derivative in the x direction was to enhance the edges in the x direction. Purpose of the filter in the y direction was to enhance the edges in the y direction. Once we combine the two, edges in all directions are enhanced. In the same way, the Laplacian uh, filter further takes a look at how fast those edges are changing and tries to enhance them further, right? Okay, so uh, we came up uh, with a kernel for the gradient filter. So based on the Taylor series expansion, so our key idea was uh, use Taylor series to approximate dp over dx, p is any point, okay, so p is basically some point x, y, okay, or pixel value at x, y, okay, uh, to approximate and d square p over dx square, uh, uh, and very similarly dp over dy, and d square p over dy square. So using Taylor series, we can come up with, in terms of pixels, uh, how should we manipulate those pixels so that we can get the first derivative or the second derivative in the x or y direction, right? So if you recall, our concept was pretty straightforward. Okay, so for example, the Taylor series expansion, p of x plus minus delta x, y plus minus delta y, is given as p of x, y plus delta x plus minus uh, dp over dx. 
x plus minus delta y dp over dy plus minus 0 0.5 d squared d over dx squared plus minus 0 0.5 d squared d over dy squared. And we can go to the third order derivative, fourth order derivative, but typically, like I said, we only go up to the second derivative, right? Okay, so for the gradient filter, as you guys saw in the last lecture, we were interested in computing dp over x, dp over dy, so we basically focused on this part of the Taylor series. Okay, what is delta x, delta y? Delta x is 1 in our case, delta y is 1 in our case. Okay, so basically this is the distance to neighboring pixel. Okay, so to develop the expression for dp over dx, if you recall, this is what we did. We basically uh, if this is x, y, some pixel location x, y, right? So in this location, delta x, delta y will be 0 and 0. So this will be 0 and 0, right? Uh, in this case, x will be minus 1, y will be 0. x will be 1, y will be 0. In this case, x will be 1, y will be 1, okay? Uh, y will be 1, x will be 0. Uh, y will be x will be minus 1, y will be 1, right? Uh, over here, uh, x is minus 1, minus one. Uh, y is minus 1, and x is 0, y is negative 1, one x is, is 1, minus uh, y is negative Am I right? Did I make a mistake? It's right. Right. Right? right. Okay. So anyway, then basically what we did is, we developed nine equations, if you recall, based on the first order approximation. So for example, if we just focus on the first column, I'll just write one equation to re refresh your memory. So if you focus on the first column, okay, uh, meaning this part over here, so let me put it in a different color. So just focus on this part, okay. Then what will be the equation? Our equation will be P of x. Uh, so for example, over here, this will be x minus 1, y plus 1. Right? So this is the delta x. Delta x is minus 1. Delta y in this one is 1. Okay? So then start putting P of x, y. So P of x, y, which is the center pixel over here. Uh, uh, x is minus, so you will say minus dp over dx. Delta x is 1. Then plus delta y is 1, so this will be 1 dp over dy. Okay? Anyway, then you'll develop the equation for the this one, third one. We'll add all the three equations. Uh, anyway, our final result, if you recall from the last lecture, was uh, if we were trying to evaluate dp over dx, then dp over dx was basically sum of uh, left column pixels. Or we should say maybe right column pixels minus sum of left column pixels. Okay, divided uh, by two. Divided by six, six right? Is that? Oh, yeah. If I remember correctly, right? And the center pixel did not matter. So there are different variations of the uh, gradient that we can come up with. Uh, uh, sorry, different variations of the kernel for the gradient in the x direction. So one of them could be if we use the binomial coefficients, would be minus one, minus two, minus one. 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, right? Or we can come up with 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, uh, 
one b squared two one. So the idea was as long as the first column and the last column pixels are equal and opposite, then uh, okay, then uh, it doesn't matter. The center pixel does not con contribute to the center column. Does not con contribute to the x. Uh, uh, direction derivative, right? Very similarly, uh, for the y, uh, we can come up with something like this, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, uh, as the kernel for the dp over d, dy kernel. Okay, and then basically, we apply this kernel to the image. Uh, whatever answer we get, we store it. We apply this kernel to the image. Whatever answer we get, we store it. Then basically, uh, to compute the gradient filter, we go to the individually derivative in, uh, values, square them, square them, take the square root, and that's our gradient filter image. Why did you divide it If you go through the last lecture, once we added the three equations here, three equations here, subtracted them uh, to eliminate the, the dp over dy, there was a value of 6 that we needed to divide. So based on the equations from the, in the last lecture. What if it's a 5 by 5 derivative filter? Uh, 5 by 5, then you will, you know, do minus 2, uh, for example, minus 2, 0, so you'll create a 5 by 5 grid. Then you'll have 25 equations to worry about. So you'll add them in a certain way so that uh, only uh, this one, but the final answer will come out to be something like this. Uh, for a 5 by 5 filter, if uh, so it'll be minus 1, minus 2, something like this, minus 4, one. what was the uh, binomial coefficients for the, was it 1, 3, 1, something like this? Uh, 1, 4, one, 6, four, four, one. six four, Yeah, so, sorry, it will come out to be like this. Uh, 2, 1, minus 1, minus 2, 0, 2, 1. So this will be the 5 by 5 kernel uh, with the 5 neighborhood. And the sum of the last two columns, or the, we are doing the other point at the center. So here we see the sum of the column boxes. So we will add all ones for the four ones. Yeah, when we develop these equations, we came up with the conclusion this has to be same as this. Yeah. OK. Uh, here, for a 5 by 5, this will turn out to be same as this. This will turn out to be same as this, but opposite inside. Okay. So if you go through the math, you'll come up with this as the final answer for the derivative in the x direction. OK, uh, anyway, so gradient filters are pretty important. Uh, we use them quite a few times. I'll give you a practical example of this soon. Okay. Uh, so, so far we only looked at the first derivative uh, uh, filter, right? Which is, once again, based on the first derivative, we call it the gradient filter. Based on the second derivative, we call it the Laplacian filter. Okay, so Laplacian filter will be uh, based on Okay, so now let's t take a quick look at how do we compute the kernel for the uh, uh, second order filter, okay? So, so again, we start out with the Taylor series, but this time, because we are interested in second order derivative, We'll go through the up to the d squared p over dx squared, d squared p over dy squared, so the full derivative. 
Okay, so the way we will do it now is we'll create four equations. So this is zero, zero. So we'll take a look at basically these four neighbors uh, in order to compute the second order derivative and why? Because as you will see, if we add these four equations, uh, uh, one of the, the d squared p over dy squared will get canceled and we'll be able to easily come up with the kernel, okay? So uh, what's the delta x, delta y over here? Uh, as you can see, x is zero, y is one, right? Over here, x is one, y is zero. Over here, x is minus one, y is zero. And over here, uh, uh, x is zero, y is negative one, correct? So let's write the four equations uh, up to including the second order Taylor series expansion. So if we go to this one over here, so p x is zero, right? So this will become x y plus one. K equal to p x y. Uh, x is zero, so what happens to this term? Sorry, delta x is zero. Right, over here, delta x is zero. So this term will disappear. Yes. Uh, delta y is one, so delta y in this position is one, so this will become dp over dy plus, uh, I forgot over here, 0.5, Square, delta y square. Okay, so anyway, uh, over here we'll have uh, again delta x is zero, so that will disappear, and this one will become 0.5. square p over dy square. Everybody agrees? Okay, uh, so that's the equation over here. Very similarly, let me go to the equation over here. So p x minus 1 y equal to p x y. Okay, so now the y terms are 0. So this will become minus dp over dx. So the y term disappeared. This is negative. And very similarly, y time term disappears, so this will be negative 0.5 uh, d squared p over dx squared. Right? So let's go to the right pixel. So right pixel is x plus 1 y. So this would be the same as pxy minus, sorry, plus dp over dx plus 0 0.5 d squared p over dx squared. Lastly, at the bottom pixel, px minus 1, sorry, px, y minus 1 will become pxy. Okay, so now x is 0 and y is negative one, so this will become dp. Uh, dy. Okay, then minus 0.5 d squared p over d y squared. All right, so now let's add all these four equations. If we add all four, what will happen? Okay, uh, if you take a look over here. Okay, all the x derivatives disappear. Do you, you guys see? dp over dx, negative dp over dx, dp over dy. So all of these disappear. So these will zero out. OK, 
I think the same thing that the students are good. I think so, and they don't stop. You know, that's why I say, doesn't the sign change? Where did I make a mistake? I'll double check in a second. Okay, maybe my next. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, it's, yeah, no, this is fine. As you, the the mistake I made is once I square it. No, see the sign depends on whether there's a plus or minus over there. So if it is negative, both should be negative. No, the negative second one should be positive. Just double check. Maybe um, um, I think in the last lecture we used delta y squared. So if we square the delta y, so this will change the sign. Because we used delta x squared. Okay. Let me just double check one second. If my formula is correct. take over here in the Taylor series. Yeah. For the second order, there's no minus. It's 0.5 delta x squared, 0.5 delta y squared. Uh, for here, there is a plus minus, depending on whether we have a plus or minus. But for the next term, there is no minus. Okay. So uh, what that will cause is, this will cause all of these to be Yeah, that's correct. So this, uh, so this is how it will come out. So these will all turn out to be positive. Okay. And these will alternate, plus minus. So they'll still cancel out. Right? So if we add all of these, what do we get? Uh, we get uh, 0.5 d squared p y squared plus 0.5 d squared p. Right? So we'll get d squared y. Squared p over dy squared plus b squared. Let me write x term first. So we'll get d squared p over dx squared plus b squared p over dy squared. Okay, so uh, c 0 0.5, 0 0.5 will become 1, right? So, uh, so this will become 4 neighbor pixels. So basically, I added all the four equations, right? 
uh, as you can see here, it's 0.5 d squared p over dy squared 0.5. So this will become d squared p over dy squared. Similarly, this will become d squared p over, right? And if I'm adding, these are the four neighboring pixels. So basically, these are the four neighboring pixels. So the blue ones are the four neighboring pixels, right? Okay, and then uh, remember if I add, what will happen to the center pixel? This will be 4 times pxy. So if I leave this on one side and move this to the other side, you'll see this will become minus 4 pxy. Everybody agrees? If, if that's the case, uh, if you guys agree, then the kernel is easy. Then basically the kernel for d square p over dx square plus d square p over dy square will be what? Okay, we have to add the four neighboring pixels, right? Okay, what should I put over here? Take a look at this equation. See, for example, let's say I have 25, 20, 30, 40, 50, 80, 60, 90, 100, right? Okay, if I am computing the d square p over dx square plus d square p over dy squared. So as I take a look at this equation, according to this equation, what will be the value? Negative 4 times 15 by 8. 20 plus 40 plus 90 plus 80, right? So these are the four neighboring pixels. Once again, this, 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 and this. Okay minus 4 times what? Uh, 50. 50, exactly. So tell me what should I put in the kernel four value? Minus 4 times uh, 0 of uh, four. P, P of <laughs> So do I put 4 over here? Yeah. If I put 4, what does that mean? If I apply this kernel to over here, what will it produce? 20 plus 40 plus 80 plus 90 plus so minus, four. minus 4, exactly. Okay, so now you've come up with the Laplacian kernel, uh, where we both have the uh, second order derivative, both in the x direction and the y direction. Okay, um, so anyway, uh, so my main purpose in the last couple of lectures was to show you, see if you Google a Laplacian kernel, somebody will give you this value, right? But then, how did somebody come up with this? Okay, uh, here's the proper mathematical background that somebody comes up with a kernel like this, right? So same way there, we've covered only some of the most popular kernels, okay? Like Laplacian, Gradient, uh, Gaussian, difference of Gaussian. There's another popular kernel called LOG, uh, which is called Laplacian of Gaussian. So can you guys guess how will it work? First, what will we apply to the image? The Gaussian. The Gaussian. And then, then whatever the result is, we apply the Laplacian, and that produces you know, certain enhancements which are very useful in certain situations. Okay, uh, so, uh, so if anybody you know, asks you, you know, what is an averaging filter? Okay, how do we come up with a kernel? What's a Gaussian filter? 
based on the sigma, you can come up with a kernel, right? Uh, other kernel that we discussed is, what is DOG? Difference of Gaussian. Okay, uh, so what does this produce? Low pass filter. What does this produce? Low pass filter. This is difference of Gaussian. So what does this produce? No, band pass. Because remember, one Gaussian may be like this. Another Gaussian may be like this, right? If you subtract these two, you'll come up with something like this. So this is what we call a band pass filter. Okay, so this is band pass. Okay, uh, another filter that we discussed was the binomial filter. And what kind of filter it is? If you recall, what did the kernel look like? The kernel for the binomial was more like a Gaussian. And Gaussian is a low-pass filter. So this is a low-pass filter. What was the question? I don't know. Okay. Okay, uh, so then we took a look at the derivative filters. Okay, we took a look at the first order derivative. Okay, if you just wanted to take the derivative in the x direction, what will be the kernel like? Okay, as we discussed, popular kernel is what we call a Sobel filter. Then the kernel is minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1. Okay? We could have it in the y direction. What will be the kernel in the y direction? You know, very similar to this one. Uh, again, in the y, it will be minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1. Correct? Uh, so if we combine, yes. All the first order, but it's the same as the gradient filter, right? Which that one? one? That last one, first order derivative, that's the same as the gradient filter. Yeah, but so far I, I, this is often referred to as a component filter. Meaning we don't combine the x and y derivatives together, we leave them separate. So if you only wanted to do enhancement in the x direction, then you'll apply this kernel. So that's what we call a component filter. Okay, but if we combine both the uh, first order uh, filters together, that's what's called a gradient filter. Okay, as we discussed, that is dp over dx squared plus dp over dy square squared. So you get both of the kernels, you square both, add them, and take them square them. Correct. Okay, last filter that we just discussed is which one? Laplacian. Laplacian. Okay, and the Laplacian filter kernel is based on the uh, second order derivative. And by the way, we developed a very simple Laplacian kernel by just taking a look at the four neighbors. We can also develop it using by taking a look at all nine, nine neighbors. Okay? And then we can further go.